I'm Jeff and today we're going to be making corduroy trousers from scratch. So I chose to make pants because I think pants have so much potential to be a statement piece apart from the traditional tops and, and shoes that we all think about for as statement pieces and pants are always forgotten about. So I wanted to make some nice pants that could stand on their own and be a nice piece in your wardrobe, but also have this loud but mature feel that matches my style. So I designed this pair of pants. It's like a dark red burgundy color and I wanted to have a little bit of patchwork going on, but really I've never created any pants before, so I didn't know how to do this, but this was my idea from the start. The first thing to do for myself was to learn how to make pants and after a long time researching and finding videos on YouTube and reading and reading fashion books, I discovered there's no one way to make pants. There's a couple different methods and during this process you'll see me experimenting with finding what works and what doesn't work. Hope you enjoy this process. Let's get into it. In order to bring the fashion sketch to life, we've got to transfer it onto a flat 2D surface which will then be cut and manipulated to create that three-dimensional pant. This process is called drafting the pattern. Fashion pattern is a flat piece of paper of the parts of your garment that you cut out onto your fabric. You just have to stitch those parts together to create the final garment. So what I had to do was measure the usual dimensions, the waist, the hips, the crotch depth, the length of my legs and, and all that. And I cut it out with a half inch seam allowance. So the seam allowance is that extra bit of fabric you reserve onto your pattern paper. So when you cut out the fabric, you have that ability to overlap and stitch, um, stitch on that overlap. If you didn't have that overlap, you'd be stitching nothing um, and it gives you the same fit. The next step is to transfer the pattern to the fabric and you can use um, muslin fabric, which is this fabric that designers use to test out their their designs because it's um, it's a cotton weave, but it's woven very simply. It's a crisscross all the way across. It's decently strong and it's just good for testing out the fit and how you want your final garment to look. So I went ahead and cut out my muslin. I stitched together my parts to create the basic foundation of the pants. I skipped out on the pockets and the zipper because that would take too much time and I just wanted to get a feel for the fit and everything with that pant. For the first fitting with this muslin, it turned out pretty well. I really liked how it draped it and it fit at the, the lower parts of my body, so the calves and the shape was great, but I didn't have enough fabric for my upper part, so my upper thighs and everything above it were just uncomfortable. I was grateful to do the practice muslin round because I realized that a couple of measurements don't define your body. Quick note, I brought all my fabrics online during this time and it's difficult to buy fabrics online because you can't feel it and see it in person. So this Bordeaux color I wanted was turned out to be a little more purple than the, the red, the dark red that I wanted. So I had to return that. And it was also a little bit thinner, but that's just the challenge of online shopping. Anyways, so I got my fabric I drafted and cut out my pattern pieces onto my fabric. This process took a long time and it's something I'll look out for in the future because I didn't expect just drawing and cutting to take so much time and ate a huge chunk of my time. The pockets and the fly were something I haven't done before so I was a little bit nervous about doing that. But, you know, I think I did pretty well on the execution of those details and I'm actually, they actually turned out pretty nice. 
you don't know, the seam ripper is just that little tool that is used to rip out the stitches that you have on your garments. It's great for undoing stitches that weren't meant to, that didn't work. So I had to use that a lot because I made a lot of mistakes. Um, so I hated seeing the seam ripper in my hand, but it was in my hand a lot. There was a lot of stitching and undoing my stitches, but that's something I'll definitely remember in the future so I won't make those same mistakes. Boom. So after the foundations of the pants were in place, I gave it a test fit and honestly it turned out pretty good. Uh, I held it up to my waist with a couple of safety pins. The fabric complemented the shape because it was such a light and soft fabric that it had good flow all the way through. The trousers were a little bit wider in the leg areas. I made that conscious choice because of my muslin run. And it's always easier to remove fabric by tailoring rather than adding fabric because you can't add fabric. I was debating whether I wanted to keep that shape because it had that, you know, bagginess that kind of fit my style. Okay, so there are a couple of changes that I wanted to make at this point. Just looking at the footage on my phone, I noticed that there were fabric folds pointing towards my crotch and generally that was a sign that the crotch was too tight um, and that for my pattern I'd have to extend that crotch area but there was nothing I could really do on the cutout piece because I can't again you can't add fabric after the after you cut it out but upon deeper inspection I realized that it was just my stitching that tugged the inseams to make them fold over like that. So I, I used my seam ripper again and I went through my inseams and redid them and that kind of fixed the problem. Another thing I noticed was that the zipper or the front fly zipper was out in the open. Um, and that was just because I didn't have enough fabric again. I thought I could change it, but I tried and I realized that it was because I hadn't cut it out enough fabric on the front left piece of my pant. I had to learn to live with it, but with all happy accidents, it soon grew on me and I actually liked how it looks now. It's kind of got that sex trouser vibe where it's, you know, it's the flies out open and it reminds me of this pair of pants. I think Acne Studios had one where it wasn't the fly that was peeking out, but the seams um, at the waist were uh, they were diagonal seams pointed towards the crotch and that was interest that was an interesting design and the fly that I made kind of reminded me of that attention to detail is something I've kind of overlooked in the past where if I was painting something I just go for the large picture what I learned in this project is that you have to have that focus right from the start and you can't be sleeping on any aspect of the whole process. When I did the muslin, I didn't measure my seam allowance. So I just, I did the pattern really well and I measured everything there. But for the seam allowance, I just skimped on that. And when I ended up sewing it, I didn't know how much space to allocate and that really threw off my pattern. The next lesson I learned was that there's so many skills that I have to learn. Drawing, drafting, cutting, ironing, how to do darts, how to do zippers, how to do buttonholes and buttons, um, and all of that, all that knowledge you need just to create a simple garment like a pair of pants, which I realize aren't that simple anymore, um, is something that really opened my eyes. And it's, it's a fun process, but it's definitely something to that takes time to learn everything um, just to be adequate enough you don't have to be a professional at ironing i don't think there's there's ironers out there but you, you have to be adequate enough to know what you're doing at a comfortable level so with the finishing touches the corduroy trousers were ready for wear
Thanks for sticking around. This has been my first real YouTube video, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I had fun making this. Thumbs if you liked it, and a sub would be helpful to help me grow to make more of these videos in the future. That's it. Cheers.